gone up. So we just got to this beach this morning, we've had about a six hour window of absolutely nothing we've set up. Uh, the tide was going out the whole time and the tide's just turned now, um, literally an hour ago and we had a feeling things were going to change. And uh, Tim's Mac tuna got eaten so, looks like a pretty good fish. So I got a six kilo Mac tuna on this one, Stingray on Joey's 130, small Mac tuna on the spin. And a surprise livey on the CRX Avex. This feels dusky. It is dusky season. Let's hope it's a dusky. Oh, he's up there, bro. Huh? See his fins? On the surface? Yeah, look. Pretty high fin. Yeah? Might be a small hammer. Oh, it's a hammer. Yeah. Doesn't look very big, does it? Yeah. Pretty good run. So we just spotted the shark. It's a little hammerhead. We need to uh, try and get this thing in quick as we can. Been on for about four minutes now. Sunset of the AVET EXW80. I'll drag it in. There it is. You. What do you reckon? Nine and a half. Nine and a half. Maybe ten. Yeah. Making the call early. All right. Just getting under that line. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Gone over, bro. You want to stand on it? Oh, he's mine. He needs a TRX on the mine. Yeah, legend mate, thank you. So, I'm on toppy now. I've only got 50 metres of toppy on. Just going right to left. Watch that line, he's going straight for it. Oh, missed it.
gun. Oh man, that's cool. Nice. What a cool looking shot. Oh, cool. On the board. On the board. Back turner. <laughs> He's still going. <laughs> He's loving life. <laughs> so what I'm running today, um, and I do most trips, is my TRX 80. Uh, it's got 200 pound extreme braid. It's full of full of that, and it fishes heavy drag. It's got an unlimited rod. I was got full confidence in this setup, and the beauty about it is it's not a 130 size, it's an 80 size, um, it doesn't exhaust you as much as a 130, um, yeah, I just feel connected to it every time the drag runs. <laughs> if you want to draw me over here guys. <laughs> just follow me over here. <laughs> Second outfit, 130 Tiagra, it's got the upgraded handle, 200 pound extreme braid, Seeker times four blank. Um, just an awesome outfit. I haven't caught much on it, but the beauty about having the 130 size reel is I can run more top shot in case we're fishing areas with structure. It is a lot heavier, but if I'm muscly, I can handle it. <laughs> <laughs> so that blank's a 100 to 130 pound, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. So after that hammer, time to obviously rerun a bait, which we've done chill out, make some grub, get some fuel back into us, and then wait for the next run. And with this one, it's pretty special as well because we got this one on camera as well, which is always great, being in that spot at the right time and having the camera on record. So check this out, pretty awesome. Get of us. We'll definitely get high. Wake like early morning, eh? Bologna, eh? Fucking around Bologna. Yeah. Just go. Did you see any out there now? This, were you looking? No, not, a little bit. Not driving to your boat. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. It's on. Of course. Oh, yeah. Oh, it doesn't like that. I've got the white, bro. You feel it? Yeah, you need the brake on the... Go reverse. <laughs> <laughs> That's so gone in the edit. So I don't know if you heard, but um, in the first couple of episodes of this trip, I actually did say that I uh, tore grade 3 tear in my inner ligament in my knee and I dislocated it about two or three weeks before this trip. So that's the reason, keeping it in the rod holder, looking after the knee, it was pretty bad. And you know, after that hammer it was okay, but yeah, just didn't want to roll it all the way out here. All right, hooked up guys. Had to set it in the rod holder, had a really good run. Oh. Here we go. This one's moving. Bit of a quiet day, but now we've got three hookups, six hours. So it's changed pretty quick, right on dusk. This one feels heavier than the last 10 foot hammer, but... It's hard to say when it's not in the harness. Do you want the harness? Ah, uh, soon. Better for my knee. We've got second speed going. Got some weight, but not going that hard. It's actually good having it in the rod holder. Squatting down the harness, puts a bit of heat on it. 
There we go. So I went to put the harness on, but it was screaming. So I set, set the uh, hook in the rod holder. I just haven't taken it out since. So if you're wondering why the harness is on, that's why. <laughs> put it on, but. So I wanted to show you how to de-hook a shark here. As you can see, I'm pulling the trace in the direction of disengaging the barb as far as possible. And then Joey's just got to get that de-hooker in and tweak it, and there you go. So it's tweaked out, but you've got to help the barb pull through halfway as far as you can with the trace first. As you would have seen, we tag as many sharks as we can. A bit of research and a uh, good hobby, get to learn about these things. Just insert a little slit there with the knife so the tag goes in easier. But remember, every time we do this, it's only if we've got time and we're going good because the health of the shark is the main, main importance. Now people, I don't recommend throwing knives around, but as you can see, I am a professional knife thrower, so just don't try this at home, people. Sick, brother. One. Cool shark. You see, they got a really high dorsal compared to a bull. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. I was pulling him in, I'm like, Ew. and aggressive. So, after that eight foot pig eye whaler, sun dropped pretty fast. So, we uh, ran rebates, of course. And then uh, later on that night, it went pretty quiet, but then later on, we got. Uh, some runs now we do want to show you this we had a few things go wrong nothing you can do about it it was sharks turning on themselves and cutting lines and yeah just had a bit of a drama but we want to show you what it is in case it happens to you you can see what it is it takes a while to learn these sort of things and what's going on but we just had a rogue shark come through and just destroy all our baits all our lines re-ran them destroy that again and then we ended up with this shark you're about to see, so check it out. Just laid down. And this has got, oh, oh, it's gone. So we're gonna show you what can happen actually a lot. Now, if you're a beginner or, you know, getting into it and going a lot lately, this is so frustrating, so annoying. It's just, you can have one shark, take a bait and then do a big loop and you haven't set the hook yet and it can turn back on itself and accidentally cut through the toppy so it's missed the whole trace you know come back you're talking 10 15 meters now this can happen a bit and it has happened a bit now we're going to show you a snippets of mate, three or four different scenarios and talk you through it I also listen to the background of us talking and mate, what we had going in 20 minutes, I think we lost six to seven rigs from this happening and baits. And what it was, was an 11 foot, 10 foot tiger and we think an eight foot, which will come up soon, tiger. So it was just these rogue sharks coming through and just causing absolute chaos. We also had prime baits out that we'd been saving for a while. now. 
what you don't know this has been about 40 hours since the last shark you just saw on this video so that pig eye whaler and we hadn't had a bite so we freshed up all the baits and then this this bite you're about to see and I don't know if we got all the footage but this bite you're about to see it just turned on it could have been three or four sharks we only caught two of them but it, they just could have come through and just caused chaos like every line was going off there was one where it was my rod on the left it went off gone the one in the middle gone and the one on the right gone all in 30 seconds this thing just came through and cleaned up all all their gear and the reason we know this for a hundred percent is because we ended up catching that shark with three rigs in it one was wrapped around its neck which we'll show you right here one was wrapped around its tail one was in its mouth loose and then then the rig that caught the shark was in its mouth so in total four rigs we just couldn't believe it this thing was a gut and just quickly when we're coming back in on the zodiac we saw the line cutting across taking the bait and then pick up the next bait as well we just saw it through the water as we're just about come back to the beach it was just full on it was so frustrating at the time but we learnt so much from this and you guys seeing and uh getting this information through our you know devastation of frustration you you'll learn so much from it you'll eventually get that shark just keep putting baits out and this is why you need a few rigs each trip so check this out we'll probably talk you through it hey, again I'll give you a hand but there's a massive lesson learned in this just so you know too because this thing had so many rigs in it and we had so much cleaning up to do we just you had to get Same it released shark fast mine, I so it didn't bother with all the tape yeah i saw it. i heard it tick my bait looks beached eh? Yeah. so my rod there on the left it's been hit and it's uh washing up on the beach the one on the left of joey there the one in front of joey he's about to wind in it's been completely snipped off through the toppy and the one on the right which isn't in the camera it got a hit as well literally one or two ticks of the ratchet and it was gone too So my line, it didn't get snipped. As you can see, there's the hook in my hand and my cable. So I actually had a shark on there as bait, a two foot shark, and you know how tough their skin is. So it's hit that and just ripped it straight off the hook. So it was a big bait on a single hook and um, yeah, so he's missed the hook on that, snipped two or three others and still not hooked. So give us some commentary on just what just happened, all three lines. Uh, Turn your head torch off. So I've got Ray, Timmy had a little shark on. As bait. As bait. And I'm getting a hit. Oh. So we've literally just taken this bait out and it's getting a hit already. So that shark probably followed us around. So this has got a two foot shark and a stingray on, on one hook. What a weird play for a big bait man. Mate, in golf jaw, large bait. Might be a smart shot. Twelve foot tiger from a few trips ago. Did this with it? Yeah, big time. It swam in. So that's not even taking free spool. No. He's chewing on it, mate. Head shaking. So through this segment of half an hour or so, we've lost seven baits. I think five rigs, maybe six, but I think it was five. And all four that ten foot tiger short saw at the start all wrapped up, and this next shark coming up mayhem eh
You gonna harness up? It's definitely not a teener. He's on there. <laughs> you, you love my way now. Yeah. See where it needs the brace when you wind? To it's stop. Got a bit of slack, like... Mate. It's not going anywhere. No, nah, it just makes it more comfortable to wind. Give you four years, mate, and you'll be winding in the rod holder. <laughs> <laughs> Has he broken the sandbag? Yeah. The rod looks huge from that angle. It's like a nine footer. Second or first speed? Second. Go on wheelchair mode straight away. Are you hoping for a lemon? <laughs> Looks like a sandbag. Yeah, you got, got something on. I think I saw a fin, eh? I think it's coming in backwards. Looks like a small tiger, bro. Show people how to use this D hooker. Righto. Get it right. So make sure you get the belly of the hook. Don't get the shaft. So give it a bit of a jiggle. There we go. So that's straight out, people. So quick little example there, how to use the D-hookers. Been trying to get that together for you, so that was a nice clear shot. That's the end of this episode and that trip, guys. Jammed all that into one bit longer episode. And yeah, beautiful weather to go home in. This is the last load in the Zodiac to the Joey's boat, so we can get back to mainland. Thank you so much for watching. You, you.